This is section 13.7 on Stokes' theorem, and this is example two. So we're going to use Stokes' theorem to evaluate our line integral, given our uh, vector field. And again, our formula for Stokes' field is that we uh, take the line integral um, of this curve over the vector field, and we're going to convert it to a double surface integral with uh, the integrand being the curl of f dotted with ds. So what we're going to do here is uh, the curl of f first, and then we're going to come up with the equation for our surface, because again, we need that for s. Um, so let's begin with just the curl of our vector f. And I'm going to pause this and then write out the curl. Okay, so here we have our cross product set up with the uh, partial derivatives and then our vector f. And then we're going to compute the, the um, cross product between these things. So what we get uh, is negative 2z, negative 2x, and uh, let's see, negative 2y. And that is going to be curl f. So we have curl f, which again, we're going to use in our equation up here. Um, next, what we need is the equation of the surface. Now, this particular surface is uh, based on the coordinates uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 1. So let's go ahead and graph those really quickly. We have our three coordinate pairs here. Okay, and <clears throat> what we need to do is come up with an equation for this particular plane. So, you know, this this these sets of uh, this th the three points that we have here, that's going to create a plane in space, and so we need the equation for that surface, which is again just a plane. Um, what we're going to do is, and this goes all the way back to chapter nine. We're going to come up with two vectors. Let's make one vector um, here. Uh, we'll call it v1. And then we'll make another vector here, and we'll call that v2. And we're going to do the cross products between them. Because if you remember, when we do the equation of a plane, we need a, a vector that's perpendicular to the plane, and then a point in a plane. So let's take v1, and we get, uh, let's see, again, we're just going to take our second uh, uh, point, subtracted by our first point in terms of the coordinates. So we have 0, minus 1, so we have negative 1, and 1 minus 0, which is 1, and then 0. And then for v2, we will do the same thing. We'll take our second point right here and subtract our first one. So we have negative 1, and 0, and then 1. And to find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane, uh, the, that particular vector will be perpendicular to the two vectors we just found. So we're going to do the cross product between these two vectors. And we get 1, 1, and 1. So then, just as a quick review, we have our equation of a plane, a times x minus x sub naught plus b times y minus y sub naught plus c times z minus z sub naught, and then all equal to zero. And remember, the vector, uh, which is perpendicular to the plane, is a, b, and c. And the point is going to be x sub naught, y sub naught, z sub naught. And we're going to use any, really any point we want. I'm going to use uh, the point 1, 0, 0, just because that's sort of the one we were focused on. And then our vector is what we just found. It's going to be 1, 1, 1. So we're going to simply just plug this stuff in to our equation for a plane. So we're just going to plug in all of this stuff. We're going to plug in 1, 1, 1, and then 1, 0, 0. So we have for our plane 1 times x minus 1 plus 1 times y minus 0 plus 1 times z minus 0, all equal to 0. And a better equation for that plane is going to be z equal to 1 minus x minus y. And remember, this is our surface. So what we have, just to kind of uh, organize our thoughts here, is that we have the curl of f. So we have the curl of f, this vector, and we have our surface. And what we're trying to calculate is a surface integral using Stokes' theorem. So we have a vector here, and we have 
uh, DS as our operator. We, we need to change this to something else. So remember, if we go back to section 13.6, we have a lot of different options. And one of the options that we utilized was that if we have a surface integral, it could be uh, converted into the double integral over a region D of negative P times the partial of G with respect to X minus Q times the partial of G with respect to Y plus R. And this was one of our main techniques to calculate these surface integrals. And what we have in, in our particular case is we have a vector, which is actually curl F. And we have a surface um, S, which is Z equal to one minus X minus Y. So what, what this is for us in terms of its organization is the vector that we have, uh, let me see how, maybe I'll do it this way. So our, our P, Q, and R vector is curl F, which is negative two Z, negative two X, and negative two Y. Now, hopefully we can sort of track this. So here's my R, here is my Q, here is my P, okay? Then what we have is this uh, surface equation, which again is z equal to one minus x minus y. But remember, in our formula, they call that g of x, y. They just give it a, 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 a name g, which again is just connected to our partial derivatives here. So when we're looking at the partial derivative of z with respect to x, we get negative one. That's really just dg dx, and the partial of z with respect to y is negative one, and that's really just dg dy. And where do those go in our equation? Well, this one goes right here, and this one goes right there. So I apologize for all of the arrows, but that's what we're going to be plugging into this. Now, the last thing that we need here is we need a region d. Now, d is... Uh, let's back up here for a moment. D is going to be this, um, let me change the color. It's going to be sort of this shadow right here on the XY plane. That's going to be D. So let's go ahead and draw that out so we have it all organized for ourselves. So we have the XY plane. And D is going to be this triangular region right here. And it's going to go from... 0, 0 to 1, 0 to 0, 1. And that's again what we're going to call D. So our integral, x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to this line. And this line right here is just y equal to 1 minus x. Okay. Then what we have, and then now I'm going to go back up here to my formula. Okay. So I have negative p, which p is negative 2z, dg, uh, dg dx is negative 1, so times negative 1, minus q, q is negative 2x, and dg dy is negative 1, plus r, and r is negative 2y. And we have dy and then dx. Okay, so there's our setup. Let's simplify this down. So we have the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1 minus x. Uh, all of this simplifies down a little bit. Uh, we have a lot of negatives here, so we have a negative, negative, negative. So we have a negative 2z minus 2x minus 2y dy dx. Now remember, uh, z is up here. Uh, in our in our surface equation, which is one minus x minus y, and if you notice in my double integral, I have only x's and y's in terms of my operators. So what we need to do is we need to take this z out, and we need to put in one minus x minus y. So let's go ahead and do that. For the integral of zero to one, integral of zero to one minus x, we have. Uh, negative 2 times 1, so negative 2. Negative 2 times negative x, positive 2x. Negative 2 times negative y is positive 2y, minus 2x, minus 2y. 
and we can simplify yet again. So we have our double integral, our x's cancel, our y's cancel. We are simply left with negative two dy dx, which is negative two times the double integral. And there's actually, uh, believe it or not, a little shortcut we can take at this point. Remember that when we have a double integral like this, we've dealt with this a number of times, this uh, double integral, because the function is one, is the area of D. And D is a triangle, it's graphed right here. So what we have is for an answer, negative two times the area of D, which is one half my base times my height. And so we get an answer of negative one. Okay, that is example two in section 13.7. The last video in this section will be example three.